So, welcome to the CDN5 podcast. So, today we're really lucky to be joined by Ryan Hoover. Ryan's one of the guys behind Product Hunt and he's an all round product enthusiast. He also regularly writes about startups, product design, and personal growth for sites like Fast Company and The Next Web. And he's involved in a whole load of other projects. So, today we're going to probably touch a little bit on some of Ryan's projects. Um, and I guess other kind of topics such as building an MV- MVP and growing a community, which is something that Ryan has quite a lot of experience doing. And then we'll probably just geek out about products for a bit, I'd imagine. Uh, so Ryan, do you want to start by telling everybody a little bit about yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks for having me, Mike. And um, the last part of that that intro is my favorite part, geek out about products. Um, cool, yeah. It gets to... Uh, one of my initial motivations of Product Hunt. Um, but yeah, I can give a quick background. Uh, so my, my background is in product management. Uh, been working in kind of that field for the past four or five years or so uh-huh. in the gaming space primarily. Right. So I, I started off in college uh, just real quickly in the PC gaming space. And uh, it was a, a great failure, um, the company itself. I ended up leaving <laughs> shortly before it actually closed. Um that's another story for another day. Okay. Then I moved to San Francisco to join Playhaven, which is in the mobile gaming space, and joined as, I think I was number 10 at the time, okay. and we've grown up to be, I think, around 110, 120 now. Um, so I recently just left Playhaven, actually. Uh, been transitioning out of that, looking to explore new challenges, and then more recently, me and a buddy uh, just launched Product Hunt, which is... Um, something we'll talk more about, I guess, here shortly. Yeah, okay. I mean, that's actually, um, I was just going to jump straight into talking about Product Hunt, but actually something you said then I thought was quite interesting. So you joined Playhaven to work on product. It grew from being a pretty small company to being quite a large one, and then you kind of made the decision to to leave and and do your own thing. Um, Can you kind of talk around that a little bit? I think that's quite an interesting thing, because for me, I personally believe small teams can, you know, build awesome things. Yeah, absolutely. So I I actually decided to leave Playhaven around, I think it may have been July of last year, so it's been mm-hmm. a long time. I, as I mentioned, joined early on, and I was the only product manager, I think, for a year and a half or so. Yeah. And that was fun, being on a small team and having, um, you know, for better or for worse, complete ownership over what we were building to yeah. an extent. And I enjoyed that environment. And as we grew to over 100 people, um, you know, you 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 become a, a lot different type of company. Um, you become more specialized and you get less ownership over the product. The, frankly, the team moves slower. Um, it's just the nature of a bigger company. Um, so for me, that was, that was part of my motivation to leave. But more importantly, I started losing passion for what we were doing. Um, I actually strongly believe in the vision of the company and the team. And that's why it was particularly hard to leave. Um, but for me, I, I'm sick of working in gaming. Um, I'm just not as interested in building products for other people. Um, just to give you a quick kind of overview, Playhaven is a platform for mobile game developers. So yeah. we built a tool set for game developers to use inside of their game. Right. And I'm not a game developer. And and although I believe our tool set is incredibly powerful, otherwise I wouldn't be there for three years yeah. uh, and valuable in the market, <laughs> it's not something I, I use as a, a consumer. So... My motivation is to build something that I'm a consumer of and something that I enjoy using. And not only is that more fun, but it's a huge competitive advantage to be the consumer of your own product, especially in a product role. Yeah, absolutely. I think, yeah, having a passion for, for the thing you're building is, is incredibly important. So I guess that's kind of a good segue into Product Hunt. So do you want to kind of tell everyone about Product Hunt, how it came about, and where you kind of see it going? Yeah, yeah, good question. Um, yeah, so Product Hunt started off as I've done a lot of just different experiments, usually things on the weekend. I'm like, okay, this would be a cool idea. Would anyone else be interested in it? Throw up a landing page, see if it gets yeah. any traction. Um, I've done some things like, I wouldn't say successful, but Startup Edition has been another side project of mine that um, it's just a weekly newsletter of kind of uh, different entrepreneurs blogging and writing about certain topics. And that's been a fun experiment. Um, now, going to Product Hunt, I, my motivation for that was just to find a community and create a community of product people that want to share, discover, and kind of geek out about products. So mm-hmm. it started off as simply an email newsletter, effectively. Mm-hmm. So I invited maybe 20, 30 or so founders that I knew, investors that I knew, and 
told them, hey, I have this, this uh, kind of email newsletter, submit different cool products that you find, and every day that digest of products that are submitted would be emailed to the group. And it was as simple as that. And so I created that, and I wasn't thinking much of it, but you know, I, I got the emails. I enjoyed reading and discovering these products. And then I started seeing more and more people subscribe to that digest, yeah. and more and more people came to me either via email or in person, started saying, hey, that product type thing is really cool. I, I look forward to the emails every day. And so I, I started scratching my head and saying, okay, maybe it's not just me that likes this, but uh, there's a lot more out there a bigger opportunity um, to actually build a real community and a real product around this. Okay, um, so you kind of built that MVP kind of, you know, pretty much like kind of very early on, like very simply just using an email list essentially. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, so I used a, a tool called Linky Dink. So it's actually a platform, uh, a fairly new platform that the Makeshift guys, it's a London-based company, mm -hmm. uh, created. And, the way that it works is you invite contributors to submit links, and those contributors, when they submit them, it's emailed out daily, that, that digest. So it's kind of like a collaborative email list. Okay, yeah. So that's what I used to initially validate uh, the product and kind of create the prototype. Okay, and so, then, and so then obviously people then started to come on board, and it grew kind of quite quickly, I take it. Yeah, it. I would say it's product time is not a, a hockey stick type of product or community. I believe that most communities need to start small and they will slowly grow yeah. and it's very hard um, to to grow it quickly and that's not our, our intention. Okay. But within two months or so we're now close to 5,000 subscribers and um, significant, uh, significant engagement and we're also still limiting who can contribute. So we have a list of hundreds of people that do want to contribute. Um, that have signed up and, and we just can't accept everyone at this time. Yeah, but I think that's a good thing about it because obviously um, for, like, for the listeners who don't know, I guess it kind of has that um, Reddit style. It's user submitted and then it's kind of, you know, it's, um, you showcase the kind of the best products on the homepage, right? Exactly, yeah. I should probably describe it. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, sorry, that's partially my it's, fault. No, no, it's, uh, it, it's the easiest way if you're familiar with Reddit or, or Hacker News is yeah. to describe it. It's kind of a Hacker News for products or Reddit for products. Right. And yeah. the way that it works is now the actual product that is built today is contributors, if you're whitelisted and you can contribute products, um, which maybe around 10 to 15% of people on the service currently can, yeah. you submit the product URL and just a link to the product, the name and a short tagline, which could be a tagline you create, uh, where you describe the product or the company's tagline. And when you post that, it's submitted to a feed and people can upvote that if they think it's cool or interesting. Um, also with that, there's a discussion feed with each product and so that comes into you know organic discussion around, oh, this is cool for this reason or, oh, I don't like this product because of this or, oh, here's a similar product that you should check out. Yeah. Um, and then my favorite is when the founders themselves come in the conversation and start describing their decisions behind the product and why they built it and how they're planning to grow it, etc. Yeah, well, I think I mean that's that's one of the things that, um, that I really like about Product Hunt is it's definitely is a very engaged community. It's an enjoyable place to go um, and discover kind of yeah um, interesting new products. But also, um, what I really appreciate about it personally is the fact that it's a filter. You know, it filters things for me because there's so many products out there and, you know, kind of being involved in startups and stuff myself, you know, I'm constantly looking at products and constantly looking at new things and it's, yeah, it's nice to be able to have that filtered through to me. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, I'm going to speak for my, my own personal value out of it and I get two, two pieces of value. I mean, other, two major categories is one, finding products that I want to use and add value to my life daily. That's of course valuable, but yeah. of course there are too many products submitted to actually use all of them. And frankly, most most of them are not going to be products I would use anyway. Like today, for example, there was this um, what is it called? Nail Popolis, which is uh, Michelle's new startup, which is a uh, community and kind of a, a museum of nail art. Now, I am not <laughs> into nails. I'll, I'll admit, um, surprisingly, <laughs> but. Yeah. That's kind of a cool product that I, I'm interested to learn that it exists. And I'm also curious to, to learn from Michelle, like, why did she choose to build this product of all things? And how is she planning to grow it? And et cetera. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's as much of a product discovery site as it is a kind of news and uh, kind of a news site. 
Okay, so so where where do you see Product Hunt kind of going in the future? Are you just going to be loose with things, or do you have like a kind of definite plan? Yeah, right now we kind of getting to my point about hockey stick growth. We're intentionally focusing on engagement and making sure people stick around and making sure it's not a flash in the pan. It's yeah. very hard to actually know, uh, um, especially when your head's down in a project like this, if it uh, has mainstream appeal. Um, I strongly believe there's a big opportunity in a product like this. If you look at the App Store, for example, or Kickstarter, um, well, let me backtrack actually a little bit right now. The community right now is based on early adopters and the tech community, kind of our network of people. Yeah. And that's the easiest to get traction with initially, and that's the easiest to build a community around. However, I strongly feel and believe that this can be more of a mainstream product, that it has a broader appeal, partly because of things like the App Store and Kickstarter have kind of proven regular, normal people love to discover products, and they love to share them. And I don't know about you, but I, I personally, and I know a lot of people will go on Thursday to the App Store um, on their mobile device, and they'll see which products are featured and which ones are new. Oh, yeah, and definitely, yeah. Thing. Um, of course, TechCrunch and the press themselves, a lot, a lot of that content is also based around product launches, and um, that is, of course, its own big industry. So to answer your question, right now we are taking it slow for the next few months to see how it grows and how it matures and slowly enhance the product itself. It's still very basic. Yeah. And then go from there. So we're not jumping to, uh, I guess, any quick conclusions on where we want to take it. A lot of it is going to be based on how do people respond to the features we build and how does the community kind of organically grow. Okay, so I guess uh, as someone who's kind of, you know, lives and breathes products then, um, you know, what are the kind of some of the more interesting things you've seen over the last year and um, what are you kind of excited about for the new year? Yeah, uh, interesting. Um, so there what I do also like about product kind is that you start seeing some trends that are emerging. Mm. And even though the community is relatively small with like 4,500 people, um, you start seeing these interesting trends. For example, I am fascinated lately with kind of anonymous communication and anonymous social networks. Uh-huh. And there have been several of different products, different apps submitted in the past month or so in that area. Um, oh, some okay. of them like popcorn messaging, an app called what, um, shortwave, what else? Uh, uh, I'm blanking on some of the others. Yeah, um, no, Popcorn Netflix. I've heard about. I, I actually, I downloaded Popcorn. I, I was quite impressed with that. I think it's a, kind of a neat little idea. It definitely yeah. has, you know, a scalability there. Yes, yes. And so there are all these different kind of apps around this anonymous slash maybe location-based messaging and communication in general is something I'm personally interested in. So I like to see kind of these these nascent apps being discovered quickly and early. And I don't know if in this specific area, if this is a kind of market driven trend or if it's a lot of people looking at whisper and and other popular apps in that space. Um, or if it's more of a pendulum swing from this Facebook kind of driven identity. uh, Yeah. That's very interesting. Whether it's, yeah, whether it's, is it being consumer driven or is it being kind of corporate corporation kind of driven? And I think it's, yeah, I mean, I, I would say personally, it's definitely a um, consumer drive on, on that. You know, I think yeah. people are kind of overwhelmed by a lot of the kind of information they have to give out. So definitely, I think, yeah, I think you're right. Kind of privacy and encryption and stuff's going to be quite a big thing over the next year, definitely. I think that'll be kind of an interesting thing to watch. Yeah, yeah, certainly. And, and discovering what products are out as quickly as possible is is fun from a consumer perspective, but from a product person perspective or anyone working in that industry, you should know about these products as soon as possible. Yeah. For example, I have a, a buddy that works at um, Message Me, and that's a communication application. Um, and of course, he's using every single communication kind of mobile messaging app out there. Uh, <laughs> he's the first adopter in that because he can learn from what they're doing. Um, whether they're doing good or bad things, he can learn from from how the market is responding to those uh, uh, those applications, and also kind of the, de- the design uh, decisions they made in building their apps. Okay, so to kind of go back to the kind of MVP thing that we were talking about earlier, um, what what advice would you give to someone who is kind of about to start that journey of building a product? 
Yeah. Uh, where do you start? <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a big journey, right? Yeah. Well, so let me actually start at, uh, I've had a few people even more recently kind of, they've asked me, Hey, I want to start a startup. What should I do? How do I come up with an idea? And my general advice, everyone has, everyone has different, uh, ways of discovering ideas and different ways of doing things. So take, take what I am going to say with a grain of salt. It's all contextual. Um, but when people ask me that, I generally say, don't try and just come up with startup ideas. It's really hard to come up with a cool product idea intentionally, I feel like. <laughs> yeah. A lot of the best ideas are usually based on your experiences or your observations or your own pains. Yeah. And yeah. it's hard to force that. So I generally say, yeah, don't just try and come up with ideas. Just be out there. Kind of encourage serendipity by using a lot of products, being observant of your own behaviors and the things that um, could be better in your own life, perhaps. Um, so that's kind of what I recommend at the very start. And then from there, if you have an idea, how can you, how can you come up with the hypotheses or the, the assumptions that you have about that product or that idea? And how can you validate or invalidate those as quickly as possible? Um, so with any idea, you have several different assumptions on who the type of user is, how they'd want, what their problem is. There are a lot of different ways of validating that without starting to build a product and writing code, whether it's talking to a customer, whether it's using something like LinkedIn to create an email list real quickly and inviting people to it. Um, there are a lot of easy ways that you can do to kind of narrow down on what's the assumption that I have and how is it even true. Yeah, so yeah, so basically try and validate that stuff early, as early as possible with actual people. Yes, yes. And it, it can be a prototype or it can be talking to people, it can be a lot of things, it can be even just looking at how are people using other products. Mm. For example, uh, Hacker News has, uh, they call it Show HN, and same with Reddit, uh, Show Reddit. It's when people share their products and their hacks and things like that. So there's already kind of a known demand and interest in people discovering cool little hacks or cool products that people have built. And in those discussions also form these AMAs or these kind of discussions with the founders. So. We've noticed that with Product Hunt, we see that there's a demand for that type of content and there's demand for that discussion with founders. So it's not that we're creating anything new, we're just packaging it in a destination for that type of discussion and that discovery. Hmm. Okay. okay. So what are kind of some of the challenges that you face so far on Product Hunt um, or, or kind of, I guess, previously on the other kind of the other startups that you've worked at, whether that's Playhaven or the um, gaming company that you worked at previously to that? And I guess, how do you overcome those problems? How do you overcome those challenges in a startup environment? Yeah. Um, you know, maybe I'll be I'll be honest, probably one of the most challenging things for me personally is uh, speaking my mind. Uh, so I'll, I'll use Playhaven as an example. And this is kind of applied throughout my life and something I'm aware of is I'm a non-confrontational person and it's something I'm trying to get over. Not that I'm saying I need to be confrontational, yeah. um, but I try to avoid uh, confrontation when I can help it. And sometimes confrontation is a good thing. Um, so an example is maybe I don't feel uh, like a product direction is the right way to get go, or I don't like the way I'm working with a particular coworker, which will in, guaranteed will happen as you grow from ten to one hundred people. And in the past, I've avoided those conversations and just kind of worked around them. And in hindsight, it's a lot better to speak your mind, and you know, it's it'll be uncomfortable, but. Um, it's a lot better than bottling it up and you know, uh, not speaking your mind. So I guess that's that's a general <laughs> advice I'd give and something I'm working on still today. Um, in terms of product hunt, more recently, like the biggest challenge so far has been, it's sort of uh, part of my my role is community management actually, which is not something I expected or have ever done <laughs> myself technically. <laughs> yeah. uh, Community management, I realize, is kind of a full-time job in many ways because it is a, a network of people contributing at all times. Uh, you want to make sure that people aren't contributing the wrong, wrong type of content or they're contributing duplicate product posts and, and things like that. Yeah. So it's it's 
kind of a challenge because I always feel like, what am I missing right now? I need to re-engage and check on Product Hunt, make sure everything's going fine. And sometimes people will post something that, let's say it's an old product that most people already know about, and I will hide that post because I know that most people will look at that product and it will kind of devalue the community. Yeah. But for that person, it's a new thing, and I don't want them to feel like uh, you know they're not contributing valuable things or that they're being um, looked down upon because they're posting something old. So it's it's kind of like a relationship community management role that's challenging uh, to form, especially early on when the community is so fragile. Yeah, but I guess that con- constant learning is an important thing, isn't it? Yes, I mean, absolutely. That, that's something that I yeah I I definitely I live by that, and I think um, actually touching on what you were saying. Uh, before about the way you work with people and being kind of honest and upfront with people I think that's that's so important and like not just in a startup that's kind of true of any situation really yeah and um, and people say I uh, I actually went to a place called Hyper Island I studied at a place called Hyper Island and it's a a Swedish digital media school and there's a very kind of um, you know um, you basically have to talk about all your problems. You don't, you kind of don't bottle stuff away and don't kind of have like kind of um, conversations about people when they're not there, which is a very, you know, I mean, compared to a kind of a working environment in this country, in the UK, that's a completely different way of working, mm. you know? So, and, but it, but it's, but it's really beneficial, you know, cause then everyone's kind of on the same level and everyone's kind of up front with each other. Yeah. And it's particularly challenging when you work with remote teams. So at Playhaven, we have uh, a team at, in Buenos Aires. We have a team in um, a few people, I think, in Canada now since the, the merger with Contagion. Um, we have people in uh, the Ukraine. It's, we have people in Portland, Oregon, a uh, large team in Portland, Oregon. So it's, it's incredibly challenging when you lack some of that human connection, that physical kind of face-to-face conversation. Yeah, definitely. So needless to say, um, you're a pretty prolific guy, um, you know, whether that's building a product or whether you're writing about different products that you, that you really love. Um, so how is it that you manage to kind of stay motivated and be so productive? And do you have any advice for other people? Uh, yeah, I should probably ask you that question, actually. Um, so... Right now, I, I tend to take on a lot of projects. Uh, that's kind of my personality. Is I like to do a lot of things, and I like to um, uh, say yes more than no. And that kind of goes along with my non-confrontational <laughs> personality quirks as well. So I'm still working on that, honestly. I'm working on how do I maintain productivity and how do I say no to more things and focus on like a fewer set of projects. So um, it's honestly something I'm working on. I, on occasion, will use uh, Pomodoro to really focus on a day-to-day basis on certain things. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with a with Pomodoro technique. Um, but no, I'm not, actually. And what is that? Uh, yeah, essentially, it's uh, the, the standard time limit is 25 minutes. So you set a timer, 25 minutes, and you focus on one specific task for that 25 minutes. Once it's up, you take a break of five minutes, and then you set another 25 minute timer and either work on the same thing again or something different. And on occasion I'll use that when I'm writing. So I will set 25 minute timer, I'll write. I most certainly won't finish a post in 25 minutes, but at least I'll I'll be very focused on that. I'll avoid Twitter, I'll avoid product time, I'll avoid anything else. And that's useful to kind of force myself to focus on something. And it's also in a short enough time period where you your mind doesn't wander in 25 minutes. It actually goes by very fast. Um, so that's been useful in kind of the day-to-day management, but I'm still trying to manage, uh, my productivity and prioritization is, is, uh, as any like product manager would say is one of the most critical things to do. So prioritizing the right, uh, types of things is is something I'm also focusing on, but I, you know, frankly don't have any (laughs) good tactics or tips for that. (laughs) Okay. So yeah, so just be, be selective with the stuff that you commit to. Yes, that's that's the biggest thing, at least for yeah. me, is just not overcommitting, uh, because I, I do that a lot. Yeah, me too, definitely. I think that's uh, I think that's a good a good rule actually. I think I'm going to start using that one a bit more. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Ryan. Um, it's been it's been really interesting to, to speak with you, and um, good luck with pro- product hunt, and I'll I'll definitely be looking forward to seeing how it evolves. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Mike. This is fun. Thanks. Take care.